perform safety procedures in using hand tools and equipment. To maintain the quality of work produced by an illustrator, the tools he or she uses must always be at their optimum condition. A good illustrator knows how to extend the service life of his or her equipment. Proper care, maintenance, and storage are the key elements in sustaining the efficiency and precision of these implements. The following are common good practices in handling and caring for tools and equipment. Keep hands free from dirt and dust before drawing. 2. Contain the cleanliness of the working area, especially the working table. 3. Avoid dropping your tools and equipment. 4. Wipe off the surface and edges of triangles, T-squares, rulers, protractors before and after using them. Shorten and store the pencil properly after use. Six, find or create an organizer where you can hang or store the tools. Seven, have a separate container for each type of tools. Eight, keep rolling sheets in plastic envelopes to protect them from dust and dirt. Nine, pencils should be sharpened whenever they show sign of dullness. Ten, use the tools only on the job that they were intended to be used. Eleven, clean the tools every after use. Follow the procedures in cleaning illustration tools. Tools in illustration are often delicate and have many and small pieces that need to be well maintained to continue working properly. Organizing and storing these elements has a great deal to do with keeping them in pristine shape and working correctly. Things you will need Gentle cleaner Rapid tube Hard stock Cleaning stock Organizer tape, rubber bands, plastic pouches, file folder, art wheel, storage bags. Lay out all the wrapping tools that you use and separate them into files of like items. Place all pencils together, markers, erasers, rulers, pencils, paper, and miscellaneous. Using the cleaner, spray the cloth and wipe down supplies that have residue on them. Pencil markers, stencils, and rulers often retain oils on them from fingers. Take the erasers and rub out any black marks. Do this by rubbing the eraser against a clean piece of paper until the black smudge has disappeared. For needed erasers, this can simply be stretched and remodeled in the wall, similar to bread dough, to get the black smudge marks out. Run your hands through your dropping brush to remove any loose debris. Then wipe it down with a clean cloth to remove any residue from the handle. Roll up your dropping papers into a tight roll. Secure them with a rubber band at each end. Please roll into a dropping tube for storage. Place the pens and markers into the long slots of the organizer tray. Place the erasers into the smaller tube slots. Fill in with any other drafting materials such as needle fields, 
bush beans, paper leaves, small rollers, and mountain speakers. Take your compass and wipe it off with a clean cloth. If it is going to be stored in the organizer tray, pin the compass down until it is straight. If it, if it has its own case, then build it the size the case has set for it to be stored and place it into the box. stencil folder. This is newly made stencil folder into a large plastic or mesh pouch. Put a dry cleaning cloth in the pouch, place over the stencils to help keep them clean. Proper clear and maintenance. It is essential to take proper care of the dropping tools, materials, and equipment. Below are some tips to properly use and take care of them. Avoid dropping your tools or equipment. 2. Never use measuring tools in cutting paper. 3. Wipe off the surface and edges of triangles and two screws. 4. Sharpen and store and tools properly after use. container for making tools. 7. Keep your drawing sheets in a plastic tube to protect them from dust and dirt. 8. Never lend or borrow drafting tools and materials it may. Hand tools and equipment are subjected to different levels of abuse while in use. These abuses may result in the tools being dirty, loosely connected, or even damaged. Before using any tool or equipment, it is a mess that they be inspected properly to ensure that they are operational and safe. And basic to remember, hand tools, equipment, and finale clean is to make sure that the workplace is properly organized. The work area must always be kept neat and tidy. All tools and equipment must be placed in a clean and dry place. Clean tools and equipment work more efficiently. This lessens the effort needed to operate them and reduces the possibility of mishaps. Before cleaning any tool, be sure to wear the proper personal protective equipment, like gloves, masks, and goggles. They are usually worn when cleaning tools since most cleaning agents and solutions are harmful to the human body. Follow the cleaning procedures as well to make sure that no damage will be inflicted on the tools. Cleaning the tools after use is highly recommended. Identify move function, unplanned or unusual events, and report the proper procedure. All functions and other unplanned and unusual events may not be fully eliminated, but it can be surely minimized. These and below are some of the more functions and other unplanned and unusual events when using the different tools in completing job requirement. 1. Pencil lens may break when used, improperly, or force is used while drawing. 2. Unwanted spilling of paint on the floor or on the canvas or paint. 3. Chip on ruler or crying gas. Pencil or pen could be damaged or unusable when fell on the floor. Five, unnecessary marking could be left on the paper or canvas when dirt eraser is used. Six, mishaps in mixing paints. Seven, malfunctioning of computer software or hardware. Inspection report of the hand tools, drawing, instruments, equipment, and paraphernalia received in technical drafting. Follow procedures in preparing an inspection report to the property custodian. 
receiving the deliveries understand that you need to ensure that the right materials and supplies were delivered on all in good condition without defects. When you receive a shipment, ask the shipper how you Is it for me? Check the delivery receipt for the consignment's name and address. If your agency has more than one location, make sure the goods are for this exact address. Check the freight to see if it's the same as described on the delivery receipt. Look at the label on each item to make sure the shipment belongs to you. Number two, is it damaged? Do not sign the receipt before inspecting for damage. Check for holes, water, stains, and tears. Pick up cartons if you can. Check for rattling. This is for something broken inside. Check to see if any package has been opened or if seal has been tampered. Number 3. Is the piece count correct? Count the pieces and match the number on the delivery seal to the number you have counted. The shipment is on pallet, check to make sure the pallet is solid with no voids inside the stack. The shipment is shrink or stretch wrap, make sure the wrap has a few pad and pieces. Sign only for the type of good receipt, for example, two pallets. Don't sign for the number of packages that are supposed to be on the pallet. However, if time permits or the pallet is not banded or shape rock, count the packages and only then sign for the number of packages. If your delivery doesn't check well, do one of the following. Review shipment if it isn't yours. If the shipment does not meet the terms specified by your agency or is damaged to the point where it no longer has value. If yours and only partially damaged or short, accept it and note exceptions on the delivery receipt. How to note exceptions? For the damage stations, be specific. Describe the damage accurately, pinpoint the locations of all defects, you can see the damage, have the driver wait while you open and inspect the packages. Write down the number and identity of the damaged pieces. This is called a joint inventory. The shortage notations. If part of the shipment is missing, write the number of pieces actually delivered to the delivery seat and circle. Then write down the number of pieces missing and note them as short. For signatures, write down all exceptions of both copies of the delivery receipt. Have the driver sign both copies of the delivery receipt in his full name. After the driver sign, you sign out. Write your agency's name, your full name, the date, and the time of the day. Follow these steps when requesting an inspection. 1. The receiving person is responsible for requesting the courier to inspect the damaged goods and packaging. The formal request should be made by phone right after discovering any loss or damage. After the phone request, make a request for inspection by the courier in writing. Note the date and time of your previous phone call and the person contact you. Keep a copy of your request letter on file. Three, once contacted about damage or shortage, the courier may waive inspection and tell you so. If so, write down the name of the person who waived the inspection and the date and time of waiver. Then conduct your own detailed inspection. Write up your findings in a report and attach it to the file. If you can, take photographs to confirm your inspection report. Any 
fashion. That's it. The back and the